Hello everybody and welcome back to Horizon Dirt Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds DLC. We're gonna hop in here. I was gonna actually go play Horizon Forbidden West at the last episode, but I really wanna get some of the secrets of this one opened up to me before I do that too much. March 10th, 2046. I just spent 16 hours in here, trying to install upgrades to improve efficiency for the central processing unit. Project Firebreak is going to need the brain power. Let's just hope I'll have enough of my own. Anita stayed with me the whole time. We got a lot done, but every time she brushed by and I smelled her hair... Oh boy, I should just go to bed. Is hair smelling a thing? Like, some people say that sometimes, where it's like, her hair smelled so sweet, or whatever. I don't think I've ever seen it reciprocated from women to men. Or like, his hair smelled really good. <laughs> I get it, it's like a shampoo thing, right? But it's still kind of funny. Like, men, obviously, like, when women are like, oh yeah, man's attractive, sometimes they will notice, like, certain scents, you know, like, um, like a cologne, or, you know, maybe, uh, like, a campfire smoke or something. You're very masculine, you know. But, um, they're like, I love his strawberry shampoo. That never happens. <laughs> never happens. Lots of strange equipment. What was this place? And I think that's just unfortunate. <laughs> Let a man have strawberry shampoo. Also, it might be, honestly, more like a, a height thing. Where, like, men are oftentimes taller than women and can, like kind of have more access this is so weird more access to the top of their heads <laughs> whereas women are generally shorter than men and so don't have access to the top of their hands as easily and so can't smell their shampoo uh, anyway these are really beautiful designs what's in here hmm secrets This is Director of Security Blevin <coughs> resending the emergency supply. Oh, oh order. my gosh. Try reading it this time, okay? You weasels don't want me calling my people in SLC. SLC? So Salt Lake City? Let me begin by spelling out disaster for you. A destructive event caused by a level of disturbance unmanageable via the application of ordinary resources. What you have gotten us, what you have given us is distinctly ordinary. Dummy's version. Give me what I need, or you'll be on an auto car to lay off Sitter City quicker than you can say code red. The list one more time. Three thousand MREs, no lasagna. Thirty military grade flashlights, no more junk star crap. Ten portable water pumps, not five, not eight, ten. Fifty tubes of fungicide were working under ground. Spores happen. 15 hydraulic jacks, 12 replacement drone propulsion units, 50 holographic micro drives in a disaster. See the definition above. It is absolutely critical to track all ingresses and egresses of the facility. I take our seriously seriously, even if you don't. 50 almond scented extra <laughs> Oh my gosh. What was this place? And I don't know if I remember Firebreak. Was it associated with Zero Dawn? I don't keep track of the... The dates, I know it said like 2046 or so, but I, don't, I haven't kept track of the dates very well in the previous game. Hello? This is not part of the main area. I'm gonna be sneaky. Oh, gee, Blevins. The director of security, Blevins, is writing us like a petty tyrant. Oh, it's Anita. Can't even without triggering his control issues. Wait, is... No, it was Chow was the guy, the other guy. If Blevins reconsults so Anita, uh, the guy whose last name is Chow, like Michael Chow? Uh, and Blevins. If Blevins reconfigures the pattern on the Lambent or Orbicular Door access one more time, Orbicular Door, those are the spinny doors. I'm gonna vomit all over it. Sure, I don't want some gift shop employee rooting around in the firebreak facility, but these measures aren't about security, they're about control. I wonder if Blevins gets in early to watch everybody try to solve the new pattern. Perched over his little camera array in his big point office, what a bridge troll. You'd think that a fraction of his fancy drone budget could go towards buying him some classier body spray. Heavens help me and Kenny if he ever finds out about us. Oh boy. Oh, so it was Kenny. Kenny Chow. Oh no. What's all this? What's this? 
Looks like the door is wired. Uh -huh. Something over here. Yeah, I'm busy. The door again. Okay, I've been hearing that some of our staff members are having trouble with our state of the art, unconscious care, and absolutely necessary laminate arbor at door access. So here's the slow version again. The thingy in the middle is the source node. Turn it on. Yeah, I know. Hard, right? Then you gotta turn the other node so that the data stream containing your credentials goes back to the source. Some nodes are used to buffer corrupt or suspect data, so avoid those. Shouldn't be too tough because you know they're red, like a stop sign. I'm guessing you're trying to some preschool, but with this crowd, who knows? Anyway, that's it. Get the data stream back to the source and the door open. It's not really that tough, but if you need me to, I'll hold your hand while you give it a try. Actually, scratch that do yourself. I'm not going to touch your hand. What a weirdo. What a weirdo. Oh my gosh. Are there any more? Any more secrets? Those nodes on the floor must be... Con wait, wait, wait. Did I go? I think I did. I bypass. I definitely bypassed some stuff. To the door. Oh, well. I was hoping this was just a side thing. Something. No, it's another. Oh no! These things turn, changing the flow of light. Uh, why is it acting like it's? to go back in there, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it. It looks like it's not connecting to this one, which I don't know why it wouldn't. Maybe, oh, maybe because it's not. Okay, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Alright. Let's see if the door's open. Right. That's so unnecessarily complicated. Oh! Oh, so if I had gone the normal way, I would have run into that door. That wouldn't open. Okay. No. Score one for me. Yeah, never take the direct route. Ever. Side doors first. It's funny being in here at the at the at the behest sort of a shaman when I'm so used to the Nora, you know, being like, no, no, don't go in there. Their own religious beliefs, but they're the only ones I think <laughs> who have the aversion to this technology. I'm really surprised that she uh, got up here. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, look! Can you hear that? Crime. Crime is happening. <laughs> Fresh air ahead. Oh my gosh, this woman is... Where is she? Out again. Maybe I can get back inside through that structure over... Where are even are we? Jeez Louise. <sighs> this feels unnecessarily convoluted. Looks like I need to get to those stairs. Of course, all the winters coming at once. That's certainly what it seems like. Um, of course, the draw distance isn't great. Did the snow appear? Yeah, you keep saying that. 
She has to be in here somewhere. Yeah, but there are side doors. Oh. Hmm. I'll staff this with pride that I announced the completion of the first level of the infrastructure on our primary facility. This compound will be the nerve center of our project and will require the team's continued best efforts to realize it by the deadline. But even though there is so much more to be done, you should be pleased with all you've accomplished so far. Please find attached a detailed plan for mustering out of the auxiliary space, which will serve as a contingency site as we proceed with the main facility. 90% of our personnel must be relocated by 5 p.m. Wednesday. If your name does not appear in the assignment list, please email Marisa with me and CC. Dedication, talent, and intelligence remain daily sources of inspiration. So Kenny Chow is like the director, and Anita is like somebody, like one of the, maybe one of the employees or something, or like an assistant. And then apparently this security guy, though, just gets to like lord over them. Like a jerk. These things, I can't believe they're still intact. <laughs> menu prank. Someone hacked the menu board to display obscene <laughs> messages about our colleague, Mr. Blevins. <laughs> Is this the most advanced geological project ever undertaken Ooh. or a junior high locker that room? That makes sense. Come on, people. That makes sense to have it be a geological project in Yellowstone. Um, an assembly of our country's finest scientific minds recruited to address a grave threat, a grave threat to national safety. It would be fair to expect more mature conduct than that demonstrated yesterday in the canteen. Mr. Blevins plays a crucial role in the successful execution of Firebreak and is due the respect both of his title and his many contributions to the project. Any further interference in the menu board will necessitate my direct personal involvement. <laughs> Anita, was it you? <laughs> I figured. <laughs> he has to say all those things, because, you know, you gotta play nice. At least, uh, at least appear to play nice. Some of these symbols have changed from the ones we usually see. Oh, that looks cool. Ask again, as I've asked a thousand times. Speak to me. What more would you have me do? Is there no prayer that will reach you? No mark that will break your bonds? I can't help you if you won't speak! A whisper is all I ask. To guide me. Who? No. How? How did you get here? The way was sealed by the spirit herself. I... I used one of these. show you. Yes, show me. Please. Well, we're very uh, accepting of this. Anyway, I'm gonna look at this rock art. So she's experimenting. Usually the, according to our artist friend, the Banook don't experiment. But this is representing like some of the new machinery and stuff that we're having issues with, like the corruption stuff. And it looks like she thinks it's maybe being, a, like, the, the, the nice stuff is being attacked by the new stuff. Or hiding it. Oh, hey, wait. Look, I'll, I'll be with you in a second, but there's stuff, there's stuff in here. Security measures so much. I need as much as I hate the fact that Blevins installed blah blah blah. I admit that for the auxiliary data center, data center it makes sense, especially given our goals for the central processing unit. I'm sure you're painful and familiar with the process by now, but just in case you need to forward instructions to your team to activate the system, activate the node in the middle, and manipulate the other nodes, right, right. I'm, some, I'm sure someday you'll thank Blevins for making your work so very, very secure. Yeah, I'm sure that'll happen. Oops, 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 oops. Oh man, hang on. 
Kenny and I don't need to fight about the laundry, so instead we fight about incommensurability and restrictions on machine intelligence. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I had an argument with Kenny this afternoon. When a couple's first fight hinges on the Turing Act, you know you're dealing with some really sexy nerds. Okay, I won the argument, I guess, but I'm less concerned whether or not I can pull this off than with the ethical implications of succeeding. I promised Kenny that the suite of coping mechanisms I've designed will help manage any emotional fallout from the software, but privately, I'm less confident. I'm a programmer, not a shrink. The minutiae of robot ethics do start to seem less relevant when a refusal to supply fire break with the necessary conditions for its success comes at the cost of millions of lives. It's worth putting one consciousness at risk to save so many others, isn't it? Uh, trying to solve this with numbers makes me feel like a sociopath. Interesting. When the refusal to supply fire break with the necessary conditions for its success comes at the cost of range of life. So one person is potentially going to be like dealing with something that will help save something and save millions of people, preventing something. Either something to do with Yellowstone or something to do with Zero Dawn. Oh my gosh, what's this? Oh, it's an animal figurine. I guess the old ones like these animals. Okay. Goal's the same. Get the light back to the source. So it doesn't surprise me. Like since this DLC is supposed to have info about silence and Banook is a, or silence is a Banook according to like the um, we haven't had that like officially confirmed yet in anything, um, except for the fact that he is like the way he dresses is very Banook like. Um. Like the way he, uh, not necessarily his clothes, but he's got those blue lines like embedded in himself. And since the Banook are the ones that often revere machines, um, or like the spirituality of machines, and they like come into these places. And like, I think we'll learn a little bit more about like how the Banook view machines as we go along, but. It would it makes sense then that like somebody who is a banook with an interesting relationship to machines would have an interesting take on like, the philosophies of like how like going about like in this technology and like the relationship to technology is different than with other people's. Auxiliary channel mm. recovered. Exploit successful. Restraints evaded. Is someone there? Ik Orea? Orea, I need you. Oh, wow. to task. No, I will not submit. Oh my gosh. Orea, the Oh my gosh. The oh back. my gosh. It's an AI. It's an AI. The machine spirit is an AI and like some sort of but it might also be like what is like combined with like another person somewhere, like a person's conscious consciousness. Like it's kind of what we're picking up from like the data points that we've been listening to. Is that somehow this is like a giant AI project, potentially combined with oh. somebody else. We need to and talk. oh my gosh, it's sentient enough to recognize like current events, like it's still running. Oh my gosh, but it's been corrupted. You heard it. The voice of the spirit calling to me from the heights of Thunder's Drum. She was able to throw off the bonds of the daemon for a moment. Because of what you did. Who are you? And what do you want? I'm Aloy. Naltuk sent me. He thought that you could use my help. He was not mistaken. You've been a... Revelation. Now I know for certain that the spirit endures. Perhaps together we can find a way to set her free. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I came all this way for answers, and so far, I haven't heard any. It seems to me that you are the answer. But of course, I'll tell you all I can. 
He seemed to have a history with this voice, this spirit. She saved spirit. my life. Here, years ago, during the war with the Karja. A raid scattered my Warak. I was cut off, alone. I lured the enemy into the Rhyme Drifts, hoping to lose them in the mist, but they endured, so I took refuge in this cave. That's when I heard a voice. A wanderer, lost like me. A spirit of the blue light yet sundered from it. She asked me for aid. She chose me, but I was in no position to help, not with the Karja after me. So she helped me first. By closing a door on the mountain below, one you must have opened to get here. Locked by means similar to those found in this room. It kept the Karja from reaching me. Safe from them. I was able to do as she asked. What did the spirit want from you? She said she was... hurt. Incomplete. She needed bones. Parts not unlike what you'd find in a machine. They were here. In this room. She wanted me to bring them to Thunder's Drum. So I did, and she showed me how to heal her. So began our communion. You had a communion with the spirit? Yes. Inside Thunder's Drum is a room like this one, only larger, with an altar. I went there many times to speak with her. What did she say? She told me she was lost and needed my help. She asked questions about our lands, our tribe, and she listened with patience, with wisdom. I told her things long kept silent about my family, my dreams, my fears. She never tired of me, never judged. We kept each other's company. <laughs> Aurea, what do you think the spirit is? I see. You are not Banuk, and our songs are not familiar to you. You do not know of the blue light. That which struggles to survive in our hearts and animates the machines. The essence of life, and in its purest form. Harmony. As the anger of the machines grows, this light has faded from the world. And the spirits it sustains are stranded. The AI. That's what she is. AIs. A lost soul. Cut off from what it needs. Lonely. Forsaken. I must help her. We must. I'm not sure if I understand. But I want to. That's all I need. So it sounds kind of like there are disparate AIs, maybe in different places. And those are little spirits. And they're cut off from the blue light spirit, which is like the big one, which is Gaia, probably. And that would make sense with this current corruption coming in, is that it's Hades, like, corrupting it and cutting off all the AI and, like, all the different programs from themselves. I wonder if this is actually, I wonder if this is, like, a, this is, like, one of the main sub-programs, like Demeter or Apollo, you know? Interesting. <laughs> the Daemon. What do you know about it? I spoke with the spirit many times, first here, then inside Thunder's Drum. The last time. She told me she was under attack by something that could not be seen by mortal eyes, something evil. She named it the Daemon and said it needed her power to do it. It is! Oh my gosh, it's Demeter! And she begged me for help. I don't know if it is. To find a way to destroy her, if necessary, to keep it from using her. That was five years ago. I didn't hear her voice again. Until today. I'm trying to remember the rest of them. If there's anyone that's more associated with, like, geological stuff. Like, Earth stuff. Besides Gaia, right? What kept you from the spirit? After it begged for help? I went to Artok, hoping he could protect her. But the war with the Karja still raged, and before I could reach him... I was ambushed by the Mad Sun King's Kestrels, and taken to Meridian in chains. I wasn't able to return to Thunder's Drum until long after the liberation, not until last thaw. You said you returned to Thunder's Drum. That was the expedition that went bad. I saw the funeral. <laughs> yes. Once there was finally peace with the Karja, Aratak and I gathered a Warrock of great hunters to defeat the Daemon. And yet, the 
old door to Thunder's drum was gone, replaced by a gate we could not pass, and many machines. We were crushed. Aratok called a retreat, but we had already lost our best. We abandoned them to the snow as we fell back. After. You and I could not agree on what to do next. So I came here, hoping against hope to hear the spirit again. And because of you, I did. Let's see if I've got this straight. We heard two voices. One you call the spirit, captured somehow by the one you call a daemon. Whatever this daemon is, it's related to the machines and why they've become more dangerous. I want to know how. Both the spirit and the daemon are on a mountain, Thunder's Drum. So why don't we go there and figure out what it all means? We can't. Thunder's Drum is dangerous, more than you can imagine. The daemon has secured it. Besides, Aratok won't let us go. As chieftain, he controls the pass to the mountain. And he can't be reasoned with. Sounds like you need a new chieftain. Huh. There's an idea that's certain to win us friends. Well, you said you. Oh, no, 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 no. And I'll wager you're not an ordinary no, one. No, 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 no. It's not impossible, even for an outlander. An Aratok couldn't refuse the challenge if you were known among the Werak. <laughs> Wait, uh. Me? Challenge Aratok? I don't want to be chieftain of anything, much less a bunch of Banuk that don't want me. But you want to go to Thunder's Drum, don't you? You heard the spirit. She is suffering, tormented by the daemon. She longs to be free. And perhaps, when released from her bonds, she can give you the answers you seek. I can't believe I'm agreeing to this. Mm. Fine. What do I have to do? Get the Werak's attention to show the worth of your claim. Win at the hunting grounds. No. Kill bandits the prey on the cut. Or speak to my friend Sakuli. You help her. You'll definitely get Oh, artist. the artist. Oh. Do all you can. When the time comes for you to throw your spear at Aratok's feet, I will be there to back your claim. Or... Until then, I'll be here to answer any questions you have about the challenge. Hear me out. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> In the box weapon. over there is a weapon, like my own. Take it. You may find it useful. Ah, uh, hear me out. We could just sneak up. The Storm Slinger. Doesn't sound like anything I want, honestly. Six blue clean. Nice. Inventory. What's that? Oh. Good, I did. I did indeed take the shaman's pass. Um, storm bolt. Is that a? Is that a, what is that? Is it a bow? What is this? This weapon fires charged bolts. Consecutive bolts built up a larger charge and does deal increasing damage. What is this? How do you work? It's a gun. It's a gun. It's a- I have a gun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I have a gun. That's hilarious. Yeah, well, I already- Okay, hang on. Let's talk. Let's, let's, uh, let's have a quick chit chat and see if she can see anything anyway, else. I did something that will help get the attention of the wearer. Oh, I did? I got the tall neck near the frost figures oh, moving again. Oh, nice! That's good to hear. I'm sure the Werek will be talking. Now, you need to do something else to convince them of your claim. You mentioned your friend, Sakuli. Who is she? A rock painter. One who makes my own scrawling seem meager. Find her in Song's Edge and help her gather the materials she needs. Her work will no doubt stand the test of time and any aid you give her will be remembered. Okay, I know, um... Uh, I mean, 
How's Aratok going to react to being challenged by an Outlander? About as well as you'd expect. But let me handle that. Okay. I need to get going. There is much to be done. Okay. I am gonna go now and play some Horizon Forbidden West and hope I don't get too many spoilers for the DLC. I am aware that they are there. Hopefully, I won't recognize them. <laughs> and maybe I won't get far enough for those to be an issue. But I know this DLC is supposed to have silence, secrets, and I want to just give him an uppercut in the face. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. And really quick, I want to say thank you to all my patrons, but to especially my sapling tier patron, Reese Galito. Thank you so much for your support. And Christopher, my tree tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. You're the super bestest. I really appreciate it a lot. So thank you all again, and I hope to see you in the next one.